I remember the last time we were down here drinking some beers and that strange voice came on and told us to disable the NES lockout chip? Mm -hmm. yeah, that was weird. It could have been the beers, though. Could have been. <sighs> Still a couple of idiots. It wasn't the beer. Dude, that that's him. That's, that's the voice. Ooh, ice cream. The, the voice. I think you guys should do a completely unnecessary, stupid, but fun modification on the NES console. Yeah, like a cartridge window. With LEDs. Well, yeah, actually. It's exactly what I was thinking of. Still morons. First things first, we're going to remove these six screws from the bottom of the console so we can separate it. we got some work to do on both halves. I should mention we're going to put a list of materials down below in the description you're going to need to complete this really cool modification. The first of those is going to be a piece of glass from a small picture frame. You can pick one of these up at the dollar store. What we're going to do here is just trace around the outside so we can provide a, a guideline for where we're going to put our, our window. From there, you want to measure in about a quarter to a half inch and create a new line. That's going to be your cut line. We're going to need a little bit of that extra space later on when we glue the glass back into the shell. So next, we actually have to cut the window into the top of the shell. What we found works best is a Dremel tool with a cutting wheel specifically made for plastics. So just take your time. You don't get a second chance at this. Just work your way all around your trace line until you've completed the cutout. There you have a rough window which made a complete mess all over your workstation. Next flip the top shell over and you're going to see two tabs that we're going to need to remove. Don't worry about it, they only provide a little bit of structure, removing them doesn't change much at all. So just pop those out. And then file down any excess plastic. You're going to want that as smooth as possible so we can put the window in. Then take a small file and start cleaning up some of those rough edges. We did a little bit of a rough cut job here, so we filed for a while. Head on over to your workstation again. Grab your hot glue gun. Place the glass on the inside of the shell and then just run a bead of hot glue all around the edges, making sure it just gets underneath the glass edges. Here you can see we were a little liberal with our hot glue, but that's okay, you won't see that anyways. There you go, flip it over. You now have a brand new window. Don't forget to erase those pencil lines. Now we're gonna start working on the LED strip lights. We're gonna apply a little bit of flux to one of the pads here. This is the power pad, the five volt power pad here. And you can cut your LED strips to length to fit inside of your console around your window. We're just gonna apply a small amount of solder to tin this pad. So, and then we're going to solder on the wire. 
We're gonna apply a little bit of extra solder here just for a little bit more secure of a connection. Whoops. Got a little bit of solder on the green pad, which is not a problem because we are actually going to use the color green anyways. Move in a little closer so you can see. A little bit of a mess, messy solder job. But it's all good, doesn't really matter, it's still going to work. So attach a second wire to whichever color you want to use, green, red, or blue here, or you can split your wire and touch the two different colors and mix and match. Here you can see we have the wires soldered to the power pad and also the green pad. Let's move over to the actual board. You can see here we're going to solder the power pad onto this pin on the NES console. Again, applying a small amount of flux. We're going to add a little bit of fresh solder here. This makes things a little bit easier. We're going to add a little bit of extra solder to the ground pin up top here. We'll show you that close up a little bit later. And then bring your lights over with your power wire and solder on to the first pin. And just adding a little bit of extra solder here for a more secure solder job. There we go. I'm going to test things out by touching the green wire to our ground pin. You can see the lights pop on, flashing green. Perfect. Let's move over and solder that green wire over to our ground pin, as you can see here. Move in a little bit closer so you can see. Our wires are a little more exposed than we would have liked, but we'll take care of that with a little Kapton tape. Just going to throw a little Kapton tape over the other pin so there's no metal to metal contact, which you would know if you had right away because there'd be some sparks flying. So here you can see we've now removed the adhesive backing to the LED strips. We've placed it inside the console around the window. And there should be instructions on the inside of your LED strips to show you how to create these corners and, and put them in different positions. I'm going to give this a test, put everything together, hit the power button, and you should have light. window here which is going to show the game that's inside the console very nicely all lit up in green or your color of choosing you can see your fine handiwork on the inside there and there you have it